remind you that extremism in the defense of liberty is no vice. Evil genius, Travis Cook, back with you once again. And I want to start out by asking you a question. When you hear the word racism, what do you think of? What, what would be the definition that pops into your mind of racism? Not, not what is the dictionary definition, not what is the definition that somebody else tells you, but when you're walking down the street or you're around the water cooler office and someone uh, mentions the term racism or the discussion turns to racism, what do you think of? What is your definition? Well, for me, the first thing I think of is that racism would be kind of defined as the thought that people of a particular race or ethnicity have by virtue of that membership in that race, less ability, less intelligence, less potential than people of another race. In other words, that your race determines in and of itself uh, how much ability you have or how much potential you have, how you can succeed in certain areas. That is a determining factor. And I would suspect that the vast majority of people, at least a good number of them, would probably define racism along similar lines if you were to ask them. Now, as we think of that, stop and think how many people you hear in a given day or a given week that actually, uh, actually espouse those type of views. Well, chances are it's pretty pretty slim, pretty few and far between. It's pretty rare to hear someone just come out and say, well, blacks can't do this, or Hispanics can't do that, or, you know, uh, one group is stupider than another. You don't ever really hear that. There was a time in our history that maybe you did, but 2014, that doesn't really seem to come up very much. In other words, we as a nation seem to have made a pretty good amount of progress in terms of genuine racism, in terms of fighting that. But yet, Despite all of that progress, despite uh, the fact that very few people you will ever meet, setting aside, of course, the owner of the Los Angeles Clippers, who, by the way, has donated to a lot of Democratic campaigns over the years, not that that means anything, but setting aside the fact that you very rarely hear truly racist statements, truly racist ideas, or, or they're almost, almost unthinkable to see these days. In spite of that, we still hear calls of racism, cries of racism, seemingly all the time. It, you, you almost can't turn around with somebody being called a racist. Now, does that make any sense? We can have a, a, a reduction in overall genuine racist behavior and attitudes, and yet more cries and screams of racism than ever before. How does that make any sense? Well, I go back and think to what happened last week with Clive and Bundy, and I know I put a, a little piece out there last week that indicated that Clive and Bundy was not racist, and, and we discussed that, that a little bit, and I don't want to rehash all of it, but one of the points I made to you last week was that Clive and Bundy did not say anything derogatory about any specific race. Instead, he questioned the lifestyle or, or the progress that African Americans have made in terms of their lifestyle since the times of slavery, and he, he raised the question whether blacks were better off today than they were during slave times or not. Okay, that seems like an open question to me. If you were to ask me that question, and granted, nobody asked Clive and Bunny, he gave his, gave his opinion without being prompted, but that's fine. If you were to ask me if I think African Americans in 2014 are significantly better off than they were in the days of slavery, I wouldn't be able to give you an automatic response. I wouldn't be able to give you a knee-jerk response that says, yes, I would have to sit and think about it. It would, it would take some, some mental gymnastics, I guess. I mean, there are some areas where, in terms of like crime and illegitimacy, where clearly they are not, and I'm not sure what my answer would be. And frankly, the fact that I cannot give you a quick answer, the fact that the answer is not a knee-jerk yes, is quite the indictment in terms of how the federal government has handled issues of race and how the Democratic Party has approached issues of race over the years, particularly the last 50 years. So that, I think, was the point Bundy was, was making, and in that sense, I agree with him. But yet, Bundy has been sort of universally called a racist on, you know, in the social media and in the, in, in the mainstream media. Even some conservatives have called him that. 
but yet there's nothing racist in what he said at all. Now what does all this say? That there's very little actual racism out there in 2016, but there's more calls for it than ever before. That Clive and Bundy can say something that's not racist whatsoever, just raise a question about history and, 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 and kind of think outside the box a little bit in terms of the history we've seen, and yet he's called a racist even though he wasn't. What's happening? Well, what's happening is that the American left, joined by the media, joined by the intellectuals, joined by academia, has managed to create a new definition of racism. There is a new racism out there. Racism, in their minds, is no longer just about saying that a particular ethnicity has less intelligence or less ability or certain things that they cannot do because they're not race. No, 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 no. It's much more ambiguous than that now. These days, the modern definition of racism, evidently, is that you're a racist if you ever question the liberal version of American history when it comes to minorities, or if you've ever questioned the effects of liberal policies when it comes to minorities, if you ever raise a question about those things, if you ever say, hey, maybe, maybe history didn't really play out the way that you liberals say it did, all of a sudden you're a racist. That's the definition in 2014. I mean, look at the reactions of anybody who points to the breakup of the black family and the negative, negative consequences that have sprung from that, whether it's a guy like Cliven Bundy or a very well-learned man such as Thomas Sowell, who often gets called Uncle Tom Sowell because of the things he's written in his research. Truly, they've said very similar things, and they both have gotten very similar reactions despite the fact that Sowell makes his points much more eloquently and with much more empirical data than Bundy did. Yet they both get the same reaction. Look at the reaction of those who point out the amount of crime committed by blacks uh, compared to other people. To, to point that out is not racist. Instead, to point that out shows that at this present given time, there happen to be more African Americans engaging in crime than other races, and we want to know what can be done to curtail that. But oh no, you're called a racist if you point that out these days. If you ever advocate for stronger voting laws or voter ID, oh, you're a racist. It couldn't possibly be because you actually want to make our voting more secure. You know, even including voting for those African Americans who legally have the right to vote and have ID and, and, and would like to have their vote protected too. Oh, no, 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 no. We can't have that. You're a racist if you want voter ID. Think about the reaction of those who ever even dare to broach the subject of cutting welfare or cutting other so-called benefits that focus on the inner city communities. Oh, no, no, you're a racist if you ever consider that. Bottom line is this, if America is ever to actually address the issues that many within minority communities face, then it will be incumbent, particularly on conservatives, to challenge liberals on this new and bizarre definition of racism that they put together and it's incumbent upon us to take back that definition in fact sometimes i i think it's hilarious because you you know you point out there's so much less racism than there used to be but then the liberals will will move the goalposts on you'll say well well there's institutional racism there's institutional racism it's not obvious anymore institutional racism meaning of course some difference in uh, outcomes that they don't like. Oh, there must be some racism there. Even though they can't put their finger on it or you know, they can't define it, it must be there. It makes no sense. And if we continue to allow liberals to define this term, it will only condemn minorities further to even more decades of pathology. You know, I think back to what Martin Luther King Jr. said in the early 1960s about how we should judge a man on the content of his character and not the color of his skin. But the interesting thing today, and the sad thing today, is that if you actually put those words into practice, those Americans who actually believe that, who actually do judge people on their actions, on the content of their character, and not the color of their skin, if you do that, you're a racist in 2014. If you believe that people should be judged on their accomplishments, and that everybody, no matter what their ethnicity, should take responsibility for their own actions, congratulations, you are now a racist. If you think that everybody should be held to the same standards, the same accounts, the same rules, the same laws, same responsibilities, same obligations, congratulations, you are now a racist. Because under the new definition of racism, you can only not be racist if you think certain races 
deserve special consideration, special benefits, special rights that other people don't get because liberals have decided that they're victims. In other words, it's liberals now that seem to want to judge people on the color of their skin. Liberals, by and large, seem to think that, hey, you're black, therefore you're disadvantaged. No, you're not. Whether you're black, Hispanic, white, or whatever else, you can make a way for yourself in this world by your own accomplishments, your own achievements, and you do not need a federal government, whomever you are, to give you a free pass. And if you believe that, you're now a racist. That's the reality of life in 2014. This is America's Evil Genius. I will see you next time.